Listen, at the end of the day, I want everybody to just sit back and ask themselves one question. What would Etika want you to do? What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I typically do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to see what lessons we can personally learn to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. And something that I'm extremely passionate about is mental health and I'll be talking about that a lot in this video. But anyways, if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, um, a lot has been going on and I've been debating on making this video about Keemstar. Um, but yeah, let's, let's discuss because ever since the tragic news about Etika, Keemstar has been just in the forefront, getting so much flack, so much attention aside from the idiocy that J Station did. But anyways, let's talk about this all right and i want to preface this whole video by saying like i have one of the longest track records of openly speaking out about the insane terrible things that keemstar has said perpetuating the mental health stigma i've made plenty of videos about it in the past keemstar is not a fan of mine so let's let's run down some of the history and there's probably things that i'm going to miss I first started speaking out against the way Keemstar talks about mental illness. I think it was last year around this time when the whole Fousey tube thing was happening, right? Like all of us watching the situation, we knew, we knew that Fousey was going through some type of manic episode. Fousey tube has talked about how he's been diagnosed with bipolar, how he stopped taking his medications, everything like that. And yeah, we, we saw the entire docu-series that Keemstar made, you know, um, since he, you know, thought that was a great idea because of what, you know, Shane Dawson just got all that fame from. But anyways, like, one of the things that was concerning was, like, that interview that he did with FujiTube after the whole situation. But Keemstar constantly talks trash about people with mental health issues. Now, one of the most recent things was... Um, some of you might remember this, some of you don't, but Keemstar was on Twitter talking about how social anxiety is fake, right? And he, and he said that he wanted to make a new docu-series and anybody who struggles with social anxiety, make a video discussing your experience with social anxiety, right? And a lot of people made videos and I think they titled it like Keemstar, I have anxiety. So his whole thing was, I don't think this is a real thing. People just get nervous around other people, right? Well, one of the other things that happened most recently was he ended up taking down a video that he made about Deji and KSI and all of that drama and everything. And this was just right before what happened to Etika. But anyways, he was spouting off about Deji blaming mental health issues, even though I don't think that's what Deji was saying. But Keemstar got so much pushback because he was talking about how people blame their mental health on everything. Now, obviously, the thing that everybody is bringing up is the interview that Keemstar did with Etika. And I talked about that when it happened. Like, I thought that was ridiculous. I thought that was irresponsible. And Keemstar's been on Twitter defending himself for what he, he did and why he interviewed Etika. And, like... Here's the thing, like I, I'm a huge advocate for Hanlon's razor, which is do not attribute to malice, which could easily be attributed to stupidity. In my opinion, watching Keemstar over this long time, he doesn't know anything about mental health or mental illness. And I'm really hoping this situation opened his eyes. But anyways, he was like, well, the doctors released him, so uh, he was talking normal to me, so I thought it was okay to interview him. And here's what I wanna say to that. Like, interviewing Etika on Drama Alert, like, right after that, like, that is like somebody just having some kind of surgery and then roughhousing with them right after. You know what I mean? Even if that person told you they were fine. Like, the situation that Etika was in, like, having a standoff with the police, like, they were beating down his door, he had to go to the hospital, you know what I mean? Like, 
like within 24 hours of his release, like this is why just more people need to be educated about mental health. Like we need to understand how this thing works. And that's one of the reasons why I try to, you know, explain mental health the same as physical health. You know what I mean? Like if this was somebody, if this was somebody who just went to the hospital for some kind of surgery, you wouldn't do that right after. Like it would click for you, right? This is why we need to spread awareness and discuss these things. But here's the thing. Like I saw the Too Mad video. I know a lot of other people have too. And I wanna say this, for the most part, I 1000% agree with Too Mad. Like Keemstar has been an issue on this platform for years now. And it blows my mind that people even still support him. All right, <laughs> like, let me make that very clear. Um, but here's the thing, when it comes to blaming Keemstar with Etika, like I think, I feel personally that a lot of us need to chill a little bit on that. And like I said at the beginning of this video in the intro, like what would Etika want you to do? Like I've experienced so much death in my life all right, and those of you who don't know me, like I, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I've lost many friends to the disease of addiction. I worked in addiction treatment for a little over three years. I lost many people to overdoses and suicides. And something I try to do when it comes to honoring their memory is like, what would they want me to do? How would they want me to live? You know what I mean? But um, when it comes to blame, like I get it, like everybody's going through pain right now, losing somebody, there's a lot of pain. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but we're all looking for people to blame. And here's the thing, Keemstar is the easiest target. He's just the easiest target. He is a face where we can point the finger at him and say, this was your fault. And here's one of the reasons why I'm empathetic towards Keemstar getting all that blame because working in drug and alcohol treatment center like we we would do everything we could, right? Like we weren't doing what Keemstar was doing, obviously, but we would do everything we could for a client, right? Therapy, groups, one-on-one, -on -one, support, love, forgiveness, everything you can imagine, medications that they would get from the doctors for their mental illness. And sometimes people would leave treatment, make the decision to go out and relapse, and they would overdose. And people want to blame the treatment center, right? And something I mentioned in a video I did the other day, which a lot of people understood, but some people didn't, and I, I just want to clarify that, is there's only so much we can do for one another. And that's one of the trickiest things about mental health. Like something I learned from my own personal addiction, like no amount of love and affection was going to keep me sober. It wasn't gonna keep me clean. Like I had a son, I had friends and family members who loved me so much and I still didn't wanna live anymore. You know what I mean? And that's why I just do not believe in the idea of blaming somebody for this because there are so many contributing factors to this. And the part that kind of bugs me, and it's been on my mind is, how many people out there do you think are spamming Keemstar, blaming Keemstar, but they were the same people making memes when Etika was first having his mental breakdowns? And like, that's one of the things about the internet. It gives everybody this anonymity. Like, we're not, commentary channels like myself, we're not gonna make a video about you and what you've done. You know what I mean? So, so many people are hiding behind this mask and so many things were contributing to the issue, right? Because if we want to, we can blame the hospital that Etika went to. We can blame the doctors who released him. We can blame so many things. And like, here's the thing. I just recently watched the debates and I'm gonna be talking more about politics and everything like that. Like, if mental health is on the forefront of your mind now, okay? Like get involved and start voting, okay? Because there are so many things, and that's why I try to educate people about mental health. There are so many different components of like the mental health care system, how we treat one another, the stigma, and all these other things. And we need to make changes in policies here in the United States so people get the help they need. And part of it 
comes from educating people. All right, like there were so many things that were going on when Etika was first missing or even before then where people were just purely ignorant to what was going on. So we need to educate ourselves about this stuff, but pointing the fingers and blaming and everything like that, like I try to think like, would Etika, would Etika want everybody attacking Keemstar? Like, I think Etika would think it's hilarious. Like, I, I didn't know him, but I think he would think it's hilarious that people are like spamming Keemstar with like cockroaches and things like that. But I don't think that he would want people blaming Keemstar for what happened. You know what I mean? So anyways, I, I just really felt the need to make this video. I'm not a, <laughs> still not a fan of Keemstar and I think he should be punished for some of the things that he's done in the past, but putting the blame on somebody for a death is just, it's, it's a little much, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.